Hey guys, and welcome back to my channel. Today we are chatting all things gut health, and I'm gonna give you the one thing that you can do right now that will improve your gut health more than anything else. Get ready, it's coming. Now, first is a bit of a background. For those of you who don't know me, I'm Leanne Ward. I'm a nutritionist, dietitian, sports dietitian, and a bit of a guru in terms of gut health. Gut health guru. I've spent a lot of time working in the gut health space. I was a senior gastroenterology dietitian at one of the hospitals here in Brisbane where I live and I saw a lot of clients for things like IBS, newly diagnosed celiac. I did the, um, you know, enteral feeding tubes, the peg tubes um, for patients who weren't able to eat or swallow long term. Um, I've done a lot of allergies and intolerances and that sort of thing. And from my time um, spent researching and learning about gut health and helping patients, and we know, well, we do know there's great research for this, that there is one one thing that we can do above all else that's going to help to improve our gout health overall. But firstly, let me quickly address probiotics. Um, prebiotics are wonderful, but probiotics, we have a whole lot of research behind them, but we still don't know enough behind them to take them almost like a magic pill. So many people think, oh, you know, my gut health is playing up a bit. I'll just take a probiotic. Really where the research and science is with probiotics at the moment is that probiotics should be taken for a specific condition, in this specific strain, in this specific amount, and for a specific amount of time. Now, unless we know that, we're almost like just randomly choosing, picking and choosing things and hoping that they might work. And probiotics can be quite expensive, particularly if you're gonna take them long-term. So a really easy tip today, which has nothing to do with probiotics or supplementation or anything like that, because we just don't know enough about prebiotics and the specific conditions that they may or may not help or whether they're um, doing more harm than good long-term for us. So at the moment, what we know in terms of gut health is that the single best thing that we can do is eat a diversity of plants within our diet. Now, what does that mean? It basically means that every single week, the gold standard for gut health is aiming for 30 types of plants. Now, 30 plants isn't just 30 vegetables. Although it'd be great if you could reach 30 different types of vegetables every single week. But what it means is different types of vegetables, different types of salads, nuts, seeds, herbs, whole grains, um, and fruits of, as well, of course. So when we think of 30 different types of plants every week, it's actually quite easy to achieve. But so many of us, particularly when we're focused on healthy eating, you know, we find a couple of recipes and they work really well for us. Like I have a lot of clients who love overnight oats, but they put the same thing in there every single day. And sure, that's great for a couple of days, but for long term, we want as much diversity in terms of our gut bacteria as we can get. The more diverse our gut bacteria is, the more we're going to thrive long term and the better our gut health is going to be long term. So it's simple swaps. If you love overnight oats, fabulous. But instead of always using chia seeds and banana, swap it up for some blueberries and um, almonds and some uh, flax seeds instead of chia seeds. Swap it up for some raspberries and a little bit of tahini and some pumpkin seeds. We can get diversity within our meals without having to necessarily change the meal type that we have, right? If you normally have a chicken wrap with um, tomato and lettuce, try having a chicken wrap and adding a bit of hummus in there, adding a little bit of baby spinach instead of lettuce and adding a bit of grated carrot and some grated beetroot. It's not difficult to reach 30 points a week if we're being as diverse as possible within our diet. It is absolutely okay to eat the same things for a couple of days. I'm a big fan of that because I'm a big fan of meal prepping. And for those of you who've followed me for a while on Instagram or TikTok, you know that for me, meal prep is a lifesaver, but I will only really eat the same thing for about three or four days. And every single week I've got new recipes, new different types of veggies, salads, nuts and seeds, and that sort of thing in order to get that diversity in my diet to help with my gut health long-term. So when we think about gut health, there's so many practitioners online who maybe aren't qualified enough to speak around the nutritional science in gut health, but a lot of the messaging is, you know, cut out this, cut out this, cut out this, you know, don't have gluten, don't have dairy, don't have refined sugar, don't do this, don't do that. Take all of these expensive supplements. That's not how it has to be when it comes to our gut health. We know that the single best thing we can do is eat a wide diversity of plants in our diet. So rather than focusing on things that we can't eat and things that are so-called bad for us, focus on the wonderful things that you can add into your diet. What can we add? Add into your diet. You know, if you eat um, most, you know, cook protein at night, for example, most people eat some sort of protein and veggies at dinner. If you always cook up broccoli and carrots with your dinner, aim for a different colored couple of vegetables. You know, aim for maybe some zucchini instead of some broccoli or aim for a bit of um, capsicum or, or bell peppers. Aim for maybe some mushrooms to add in. There's so much more diversity that we can get within our diet. Maybe sprinkle some sesame seeds on top of your broccoli. That again is getting you an extra plant point for the week and you're you know, one step closer to those 30 plants that we're really aiming for. 
Other examples might be, say you love cooking spaghetti bolognese for your family. That's wonderful. Instead of using normal pasta, why don't you try using some lentil-based pasta or some chickpea-based pasta? Instead of just using a thing of mince, maybe half the mince and dump in a tin of um, black beans instead. Instead of just um, always putting in grated zucchini and carrot into the spaghetti, why not try putting some mushrooms, some onions, some garlic? They all count in terms of your plant points for the week as well. If you were to make a spaghetti bolognese with chickpea pasta, add some zucchini, add some carrot, um, add some mushrooms in there, onion, garlic, top it off with some fresh herbs such as parsley, and then um, sprinkle on some, I don't know, chia seeds or something to finish it off with. That's eight points for the one meal. We only need to get to 30 guys. It's actually a really achievable goal if we're really trying hard to add extra things into our diet when it comes to looking at and improving our gut health overall. I have a lot of clients who might be a little bit, um, you know, more of the fussy eater and they say, I don't like brown rice or I don't like eating brown bread. I prefer the white variety, which is lower fiber, which we know for gut health isn't anywhere near as good. So why not try mixing um, maybe 70% white rice with 30% brown rice and mixing that together because our taste buds take six to eight weeks to adapt to something new. So if you're gonna try something, you might not like it initially, but if you push on and persevere with it, in six to eight weeks time, our taste buds can adapt and we might actually become more open to these new tastes and new flavors that we're trying as well. So just because you try something doesn't necessarily mean that, um, you know, if you don't like it, you should never try it again. Your taste buds do change over time as we age and as we continue to try things, given time, six to eight weeks. So. Really, I feel like if you're not someone that likes a lot of fruits and veggies and different fibers and that sort of thing, really aim to just add a small amount in or mix it with some other things that you do enjoy and persevere with that because long term your taste buds can change as well. So that is my one big cracker of a tip for you guys in terms of gut health that is supported by the current research and science that we have in the nutrition space around gut health. Let's aim for 30 different types of plants every single week. Have a little tally sheet up in your fridge and every time you eat a new fruit, a new veggie, a new nut, a new seed, whole grains, beans, legumes, all that sort of thing, they're all wonderfully healthy for gut health. Let's aim for 30 plus in terms of variety every single week. That's your challenge for this week. DM me on Instagram or comment below and let me know how you go with this challenge and don't forget to subscribe to my channel smash that subscribe button below because i have amazing content coming your way and i hope to see you guys very soon back on my channel